there guys, I'm Chris Bowden, welcome to The Geek Group. We're here today for this equipment autopsy, which will be maybe not an autopsy. We might get lucky because I would like to, to do something that we have never done before, and that is put this back together at the end and have it actually work. That could be kind of cool. This is a really big vacuum pump that was donated by our very own Bruce, who we love and adore. So I'm going to be kind of careful in taking this apart because there is an outside chance this may live again. What we have here is the vacuum pump assembly. This was his giant installed vacuum system in his workshop. And uh, Bruce owned a, a non-trivially sized electronics and testing company. So they used vacuum for all kinds of stuff. Um, I would like to have a institutional vacuum system for the building. I think that'd be pretty cool and this would be a good way to do it. We have a seven and a half horsepower, three phase 480 volt motor here. The shroud protecting us for OSHA safety and delicate goodness from the big, bad, dangerous belts and flywheels. And then over here, we have a really big vacuum pump. It is an ITT Pneumotive, ITT Pneumotive, P-N-E-U-M-O-T-I-V-E, -E, from Monroe, Louisiana. Um, it's a Model 100, and that's everything I know about it. This is the input, this is the output, within there be oil, as you can tell because there's lots of these nifty oil dispensers, which are kind of cool in how they're constructed. This one's broken loose for us here, but you can see there's the oil jar, and you, you open it like that, and then you fill the oil jar, and then flip it over, and there's a little oil cup, and it drips oil right down into the bearing. So. That's kind of cool. We're going to get that out of the way because I'm going to have to take that bolt out. I expect this to be one of the messier autopsies. And I know that you guys love to see me suffer. So I don't know that it'll be bad as the Project Kevin videos. Oh, yeah. That's perfectly tip top. But we'll see how we do. All right, that one's still tight. Now, really I think everything begins with this ring of bolts. There isn't a whole lot to dig into here because it's a relatively simple machine. Everything, now I haven't opened this yet so I don't know for sure, but what I expect to find is a rotary vein pump which will be a big round circle armature with a lot of little slats in it around the sides. That's what I'm expecting. We'll see if I'm anywhere near right. All right, we've got that. Batman was kind enough to lay out all our tools, so we've got our nifty little impact driver. Now I'm going to take out the bottom few first because if this is going to start leaking right away, I'd like to get that part out of the deal and just done with and let it goop all over the floor. Because given that this is the year of the sheep, I am the all-powerful Iron Fist, and I can make a giant mess of oil all over the floor, and the little people, the minions, can come and clean that up. I'm going to leave the top one there. because if that just falls, I want to be able to relatively control it. So by leaving the top one in there, it kind of holds it together a bit. Now let's see what happens. Okay, we're cool. Okay. It's not just popping off. Now I have a pin here that goes all the way through to index it, and there's a pin on the other side, but I also have this little tiny thing, I'm not sure what that is. I've got a little bit of a thing here. I may have to take the cap off. I don't 
think I do. I think this just holds the bearing, but let's get a look in there and see. Oh, come here. really nowhere to grab that at all. I don't want to force it. There's no threads in there. There we go. So we've got a heavily gunged up that's nasty. Can you shot of that? We have a heavily gunged up end cap here. Okay, now this is just a bearing press fit in here. I think, think I can get this off without having to take all of that assembly out. I'm not sure. I do have a socket that fits it. Let's see what happens if we take that off. Okay, that holds a little disc. That's as far as that's going to get us, really. We'd probably need a puller or something to get that out. So I'm going to work this up here. But to do that, I'm going to need a more substantial hammer. Mr. Harwood. No, I don't want to go to that, but can you get me a, a small ball-peen hammer of some manner? Yep. Thank you. All right. Thanks to our illustrious Batman, I now have this big widgy bit, which has about five different names depending on who you ask. But today, I'm going to call it a drift and a nice little ball-peen hammer. With this, I'm going to pop the front off, which, if everything goes according to plan, should just go boop and fall right down. There may or may not be some oil involved. There's just a tiny little lip and it's not in any manner co coaxial. Like, I've got a lot of lip here, but it's negative over here, so I have to, this could be tricky. It moved. Batman, get me a cold chisel, a skinny one. I have a skinny cold chisel. Magically appeared. That wasn't even like editing magic. That was just there, and I didn't see it. The sound changing tells us success is imminent. That's really on there. The reason this is so thoroughly attached is because it's a vacuum pump and has been sucking itself together for 30 years. It totally isn't, but it's a good excuse as any. I bet I can transfer over to this big widgy bit. Maybe. because it's totally a good idea to smack the pointy end. Ah, oh, oh, there is movement. Come on. Oh, 
I think I've got you. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, I got it! All right, now I'm going to be careful not to set it down on the polished machined face. And now we can see the rotor and the veins. That's why this is a rotary vein pump. Now the way this works is it's kind of for a really stretching, very, very oversimplified analogy, it's kind of how a Wankel engine works, so a rotary engine. Because what you have is the interaction between the inner rotor and the housing. The outside surface of the rotor and the inside surface of the housing work together in order to accomplish the goal, which is how a Wankel engine works. Also, I like saying Wankel engine. By the way, the one you're used to is called an auto engine. Now, these here, these parts are the veins. I'm going to put on a glove because this is where things get messy. The veins in the middle move in two different ways. They're moving around and around like this. In fact, I'll bet it wouldn't take too terribly much work. Yeah, let's try this. Can I do this? Do I have one that fits? No. Does this one fit? Please fit. It'd be so cool if, yes. Cool. All right. This is going to be neat. I'm just going to set those under there because those will be going back soon. All right. For safety, we'll remove the guard. Don't fight it. You know you want to come off. Ah, the belts got, oh, really? I can't take the guard off with the belts in place. How would you change the belts? How do you change the belts if you can't take the guard off with the belts in place? What stupid design is this? It's got to go up. It's got to come off. Because otherwise, you'd never be able to change the belts. Ah, there's a fan in the way. There you go. OK. I'm like, there's just certain laws of physics that says it has to come off. OK. It'd be a hell of a mathematical problem to figure that out. Change the belts without taking the guard off. All right. So now, this is bad because this has to be really, really clean. And this is covered in schmutz. So this hand is going to be the dirty hand. And this hand's going to be the goopy hand. And I can't let any of this dust get into here because that would offend it. Now the cool thing is I know which way this works because you can tell from the, the input is here and the output is here. So the air goes around this way. Also, there's a big bright yellow arrow on top that says rotation. So that makes things pretty easy. Now I'm going to move this and you'll be able to see these work. So I said that the veins move in two directions and they do. They move this way laterally and they also now, they don't do it right now because this is a little gunged up and it hasn't moved in a long time. But when this is doing what it's supposed to, the veins are flung out because physics. There you go. And the veins push against the side walls like that. And as it goes down, you can see the vein is grabbing this section of air. And then this vein grabs a bit of air. Oh, this is so gunged up. You know, I don't think these veins are faulty. I think this just really needs to be cleaned. But you can see this grabs a section of air. And then it spins around. And the wall, because it's concentric, meaning circle inside a circle, but not coaxial, meaning the circles have two different centers. This pushes the vein back in, and that forms a nice seal. And then it takes whatever's in there, and since the volume of the chamber is smaller, it pushes it out here. And then the volume of the chamber is also almost nothing up here, and then it starts expanding again. So we take a big gulp of air, we push that around, 
and we spit it out here. And it's really, really simple how it works, but it's quite clever. And I think we could fix this. I think if we take this, really, we don't have to take it any more apart than it is. We just have to take these out and clean everything in here really good because what it is, is it's the same as this. If you look, if you look on here, see this? All that schmutz is a combination, and we'd have to really examine it to be sure, but I'm pretty sure everything there is one of two things. It's a combination of dried out old lubricant and little tiny shavings from the phenolic bars. But if we take these out and they're relatively smooth along the top, like they're, they're in good shape and they've got a nice bevel on each edge, and there isn't because the holes are halfway in. So if we take one of these out and there's a big worn spot in the middle where it goes past the holes because that might be acting like kind of like a plane and just and shaving it off a little bit, then we know that these are worn out if there's a low spot at this top seal. But if these are straight across, then it's okay and we just have to clean it and this pump could work again and that'd be really cool. So let's, give me that. Let's lay out a clean spot here and I'll see if I can work these out. Um, Mr. Harwood, I need a, a couple long skinny screwdrivers, like an electrician cabinet screwdriver would be perfect for this because I would like to not screw these up. Let's clean this off really good. Let's see if we can pop this out without hurting it. Ow. Let's see if we can pop this out without hurting me. Oh, that's the one that I had loose. Okay. Come on around over here. Ugh. Now, let's spin this around. So we've got a lot of gunge on the inside. And it's really sticky. And this is smooth. We've got a good seal surface. So I'm going to put that on there with the seal pointing forward. Now let's see if we can get another one out. Yeah, I think the entire problem with this pump is nothing more than the seals are all gunged in place. So I think we can fix this. I set that one with the seal point. The, it's pretty easy to tell which is the front and which is the back because the backs have notches in them. Oh. It's beautiful, it's a good seal. Which is cool because we have phenolic in stock, but I don't think we have either, I think that's about quarter inch thick. I don't think we have that exact size in stock. And this is a lot better than having to cut and shape new ones from scratch. You're gonna sit right there and I'm going to tap you lovingly and gently with a hammer because that's, that's just how my love rolls. Having to knock the veins free with a hammer is generally not a good sign. Okay, so I've got all my seals pointing out. These are the veins of the rotary vein pump. And now the next step is a very serious detailed cleaning. So this is going to take some work. So we're going to clean this, 
And then we're going to come back, and we're going to put it all back together, and we'll see if we can make it work. So that's the end of part one. Everything that's going to happen is basically just cleaning everything as good as we can, including the outside of this. And I might even be able to get this hooked up with some kind of small motor just to spin it a little bit. I don't think we need the big giant one. So we'll be back. All right, we're back. It is now several days later because we had to call in our awesome engineer, Sam, to do one of those little things where you look at that five seconds later and go, really? That was, that was how it was done? So we had that experience. But it is now all clean thanks to a massive amount of help from all the interns. Everything is cleaned inside and out, and we're ready to do the official assembly. Now, once or twice in the two or three videos that we've made, I have done something and gotten one or two people who may have commented and said, Oh my god! So in order to avoid that, I'm going to just outright ask your assistance and your input. Because I have never assembled a vacuum pump before. I understand the mechanical side of how to put this together. We're going to do that, and it's going to be fun. What I don't know is the exact perfect oil to use for this exact pump. But one of you does. So please comment, let us know, and when that happens, we'll take it apart and we'll oil it properly. Today, I'm just going to put a little bit of a very light machine oil in it in order to just do the assembly. I'm thinking of it like assembly lube, so that I can spin it up and show you it working and we're cool, so I won't damage any seals or anything. But for the real oil, let me know. We'll get the right stuff. Okay? All right. So with that, let's put this together. Ah. Now, the first thing I have to do is put the very large rotor back inside it. Now this has been superbly cleaned. I'm going to double check everything and make sure they're all nice and shiny. Oh, oh, the guys did a great job. Okay, so all I got to do is pick up that giant thing and stick it in there. Oh, wow, that's got a heft to it. I don't know how they got this in here the first time. Not quite, but very close. Okay. We need to help it along a bit. Ha! That's a trick. Okay. I figured that all out all on my own. Ah! I have to take it back out. I figured it all out. I gotta take it back out. But not all the way. Before I put that in there, we used a solvent based cleaner and degreaser. Can I have a knife, please, from somebody? Thank you. I want to specifically put some lube in this bearing. This little can of like 60s vintage oil. God knows how old it is. I'm just going to put some lube right in here. If you look right down in the middle, you'll be able to see this. I'm just going to flood it with that light little oil. All right. Now let's try this again.
and we're in. Yay! Okay. Now, I'm going to do the assembly of this bit here next because I want to make sure that's all tight and in there and good before we go on to anything else. So, I believe the fan is next. And magically appearing is the Allen wrench I'll need for the fan. Now, this goes on this way. Just slide that all the way up there. And there's just a simple set screw. And this is, of course, the finest quality of impeller here. Okay. Wow, that, wo that moves way better than it did before. And we'll put a little oil down in here, put a little oil down in here. Just let that work around a little bit. Yeah, it's happy. Okay. Now, we've got our key. And this piece, and they have to line up just right. I got to remember the order of operations. This goes on this way, and then this sets through it. Yeah, this is this is weird. You got to put this on first. And then this has to line up with the keyway. Blue paint on the outside, so I know that's the way it goes. Okay, so I've got my key in position and everything's happy there. Then you pick this up over it. And three of the four holes have threads. No, two of the four holes have threads. Well, I can live with that. So we've got our pulley in place. Now this is a weird arrangement because these three wedge together with the key to lock everything in place. So it's kind of, kind of weird. And we'll grab these two bolts. And this has obviously been redone because the bolts are two different lengths. But we don't really care. As long as the bolt is long enough to go through and stick out the other side a little bit. After it's going out the other side, it doesn't really care how far it sticks out the other side. And what this lets you do is adjust the the in and out location a bit, but we don't really care about that too terribly much because we can adjust it in other ways. <laughs> I am the luckiest man in America. Now I'm gonna bring this down evenly. And that snugs everything right up. Okay, 
And now we have a rotational assembly once again, which is pretty cool. So that's everything that has to happen out front. Let's go back to the back. Cool. Now I'm going to put a little oil in here. Just let that work around. And now we put our veins back in. And these really should just flop around. Now, see how that's different than it was before? Look at how the vein moves. We come out here, and it'll fall, and it drops down. Into, and now remember, the end plate would hold this in place. But as it comes down, it falls, and now it takes all this air that's coming in this pipe, and watch. We'll add the second vein, and you can see this in action. We've created a cavity here. Now this drops. Now these would be pushed against the outer wall by centrifugal force while this is spinning. So now you've got an air cavity, and it's, it's big, and it gets bigger as it goes this way. And then it starts to shrink because we're compressing that air a little bit, and these fall back into place. And it would, because the cavity shrinks, it pushes it out there. And now you can see the pump doing what it was supposed to do back then, which is really cool. See, and they're all moving around and happy. That's neat. Okay. So I'm add just a little bit of oil here. Make sure everything keeps moving. So I don't want to damage anything. All right. Now, we had the next bearing assembly on this side, which is the big back cover. I've got a bearing on the outside and nothing that I can lubricate from the inside. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to flood that with oil when we get to that point. First, I've got to figure out this goes like that. Okay. We'll just line it up to the holes. Everything still moves just like it's supposed to. We're not quite in position yet, but I need There you go. Beautiful. And the whole pump moves the way it's supposed to. That's lovely. All right. Now, we just put all these little bolts back on the back. So I'm going to sort out all my bolts that are the same, because I want to make sure to not use any of the wrong bolts. Okay, so now we just put all these back in. There. The pump. Whoa, how about that? Listen, really close. It moves air. Th 
that's really cool. We took something completely apart, put it all back together again, and it sounds like an old John Deere. <laughs> that's neat. All right, well, we're going to take a minute and get the belts on this, and that's going to be probably about a good 20 minutes of really foul adult language. So, we're not going to show that on camera. But after we get the belts on, we're going to be back, and we will actually spin this up, and I'm going to see if we can dig up a vacuum gauge to actually put on there, and pull a vacuum down on this if we can, and prove that it actually works. All right, we're back, and in my magical bag of fun, Batman made me this high-tech, custom-fabricated, inch-and-a-half by six-inch black steel pipe nipple with an end cap, and we totally did not steal the vacuum gauge off the vacuum chamber in the wood shop. Really. For the record, Batman did that. I was having good, sunshiny thoughts far, far away when he did that. So I'm going to put this on here. This is just temporary. This is just a, a hack-together thing for testing. But we'll just snug that down. And yes, I know, to the 10,000 commenters, I smacked my knuckle when the thing slipped off the thing. I bleed for this. That's how much I care. All right, so we've got that. Now, I've got to put this back on, our little end cap, for safety. I've got, I've got three little bolts that all look right. I think that one goes there. I don't really want to go in there. It seems offended at the mere thought of it. I'll try a different bolt. What do you think? You love this idea, okay. We'll go with that bolt. Come on, get in there. That'd be really cool if the socket fit. It's that one, okay. Okay, so we've got that in. Now we're going to put our end cap on. And there's a notch on one side, so, and there's a notch there, so that goes up. But I've only got three screws for this. When we did this, it was missing several parts. Found it. And yes, I know we're missing a bolt, but that's how it came. Stay tuned for an update video someday when we talk to our cool friends at BoltDepot.com, figure out all the exact sizes we need for this, and you see these all replaced with shiny new bolts, and we'll give it a paint job, make it all sexy. It'll be great. All right, so I got a few left. I got this roll pin. It looks really important. I don't know where it goes. I feel that I should, but I have no idea where this goes, but I'll bet we find out before too long. All right, so we've got a gauge on it. We've got the cover in place. I'm gonna add a little more oil in there. Okay. Ah, now. Ah. 
Okay, let's roll it over into position and see what we get. Do not wire stuff like this at home. This is a quick hack together test. But we happen to have a nice 480 outlet right over here. Okay. All right, here we go. We got our plug in. Everything's cool. Aha! We pegged the meter. It works. Nothing blew up and flew off or anything. We're shooting oil out like crazy, but that's just because there's a bunch of oil in there right now. It works for the first time in geek group history. We did an equipment autopsy. We took something completely apart. And it was hard because we, had, we took it apart and it was apart for like two weeks and we had to move it because we're in the middle of remodeling and painting and stuff so there's a huge mess. We managed to not lose any apparently critical important parts. We got all back together and the damn thing works! Ah! So yeah, that's pretty cool. There is a moment in a lot of things and it's a moment that I hope a lot of you really get to experience. It's called first light. It's when you build something, and I don't care if it's a, a racing engine or a Tesla coil or a robot or a model airplane or anything. With everything that you can build on your own, there's that moment when it first comes to life. And, and it might work, it might not, but there's that moment when, it, when it, it first comes on. And you get to see something that you built do something and take shape. And around the lab, we have traditionally called that moment first light, because it started with Tesla coils. And as you can see, that's, it, it can be just a simple vacuum pump, but it's a magical moment. It's, this, it's, it's discovery, man. It's really cool. And it's something that I sincerely, with, with every fiber of my being, want you to experience. And I want to share that with the world because, man, that's magical. That's just cool. So, yeah. So thank you for hanging out for the most fun in an equipment autopsy I have ever had in all the years we've been doing this. We, we put it back together again, and it worked. And that's just awesome. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden here at the Geek Group. And as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.